So I'm not a portrait photographer. My specialty is birds or wildlife in general. So when I do take portraits, I usually use techniques that I've learned from the wildlife world. To give you an example, wildlife photographers sometimes enhance their images with a flash. A couple years ago, I stumbled across this really cool image of the kingfisher diving for prey. And while the drag behind the bird looks photoshopped, it's actually completely natural and is a product of the photographer using a slow shutter speed to capture this image. Without a flash, the photo might have turned out like this instead. The kingfisher would have just been a blur, essentially. So I will try and explain in simple terms how the photographer obtained this image instead. Okay, bear with me. We have to do a little bit of simple math here. So for simplicity, let's pretend that the image uh, had a shutter speed of one second. So in other words, let's pretend that the mirror opened as the photographer clicked the shutter, one second passed, and then the mirror shut. Let's also assume that the flash fired for a quarter of a second. So here's an oversimplification of how the image actually was produced. For the first three quarters of the second, the shutter opened and the flash was off. So you see this blur from the Kingfisher at the beginning. And then in the last quarter of the second, the flash was fired off, which allowed that final moment where the Kingfisher pops out with a lot of sharpness. If you wanna know more about the photographer who took this image or the process of taking the image itself, I've linked the article in the description below. So I don't know if there's a name for this technique, but for the remainder of the video, I'll call it flash blur. And I will say flash blur can produce some pretty cool results on human subjects too. So this is the Godox Lux Senior. I have to admit, I really like this kind of fan style of flash here, which is probably part of the reason as to why I bought it. Also, what's awesome is that there's a sync cable, which allows it to be compatible with this 1994 Hasselblad, uh, which means that I can use the flash on both digital and film camera. Anyway, after picking this up, I immediately wanted to see if I could produce that dreamy effect with flash blur for my own photography. So a couple days ago, I asked Joy at Joy's Paintings, by the way, check her out on Instagram. She makes really cool paintings. So I asked Joy if she could model for some images. I tried it out both with my uh, digital Canon camera as well as the Hasselblad to compare what it looks like on both film and digital cameras. And I will admit that some of these photos turned out way better even than I was expecting. So let's take a look at this first image, which is taken at 1 100th of a second, which is honestly really fast if you're trying to do this technique. Since I had so much bright natural light coming in, as I do today with the sun coming out. I had to use a faster shutter speed than what you would usually use for this technique, like uh, one tenth of a second. What's awesome here is that the motion blur is really obvious, but the image is also super sharp because the flash fired right at the beginning of the shot. If I zoom into Joy's eyebrows here, they're not blurry at all. So that's what I really like about flash blur. You kind of get the idea of the movement from the motion blur, as well as the sharpness from uh, what you would expect from a professional setup. So here's another image I really liked. Uh, this one taken at 1 30th of a second. And if I zoom into one of her eyes, there's a lot of detail despite all the movement. I really like the dreamy feeling caused by this technique and it was something I didn't have access to prior to buying a flash. So in this third image, I really uh, tried to push the bounds here. I decided to have two sources of motion. Uh, the first one was me actually hand holding the camera and moving it around a little bit as the shutter fired off. And the second was I asked Joy to move also during the image to see if I could kind of have a lot of different blur uh, happening everywhere. So this way, now we're getting motion blur from two dimensions, the camera and the subject. So now we have more blur and we're seeing lines from curtains and clothing kind of imprinting themselves onto her hair. But again, because we have the flash firing off, it's not just a blurry image. And if I zoom into this image, you can see in fact that we have so much sharpness that we can actually see the texture of her skin. Unfortunately, these images didn't quite turn out as well uh, on the Hasselblad and I'm gonna show those images right now. And I think that that's just a product of not having as many images that I can take per roll. With the Hasselblad, I think I took around 14 images, which people in the film community would know that's actually pretty expensive. That's like 20 to $30, even more. But on digital, I have this opportunity to take hundreds of images and then I can pick out the best ones. If you're into portraits and street photography and you wanna try out a new technique, I hope this was interesting to learn about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.